My name is Atinuke and I am the author of Tada! Anna Hibiscus! And also a book called Too Small Taller and soon a book called Too Small Taller and the Three Fine Girls. Anna Hibiscus was my very first book and it is included in the Camp Candlewick Summer Reading Program! Hooray! I am going to read to you a little tiny bit from Anna Hibiscus so you can see if you would enjoy to read this book too. Anna Hibiscus lives in Africa, amazing Africa, in the country of Nigeria, which is where I was born. She and her family live in a big white house, in a beautiful garden, in the middle of a compound, which is a yard. All around the compound is a wide white wall and outside the wall is the city. It is a big African city of lagoons and bridges and roads, of skyscrapers and shanty towns. Ships and boats sail up and down the lagoons which wind through the city from the sea to the rainforest. Ships and boats loaded with people and goats and goods. Every road in Anna Hibiscus's city is jammed with hundreds and thousands of cars, buses, taxis, motorbikes, all loaded with people and all blowing their horns. Beep, 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 beep. There are millions and millions of people in Anna Hibiscus's city. People being born and people dying. People growing up and people growing old. People studying and people walking, walking, walking. People running, singing, driving, singing, talking, shouting, laughing, fighting, buying, selling, selling. The city is always busy and noisy and loud. However noisy the city was, Inside Anna Hibiscus's compound, it was always quiet, quiet, quiet. And Anna Hibiscus was bored of this quiet. She was bored of playing with her cousins, bored of housework with her mother and aunties, bored of listening quietly to grandmother and grandfather. Anna Hibiscus lives with her mother and her father and her grandmother and her grandfather and her aunties and her uncles and her cousins and her brothers but the big cousins were always at school or university and the aunties and uncles were always at work and grandmother and grandfather were so quiet. So Anna Hibiscus loved to stand at the gate and watch the big, busy, noisy city. She knew all the girls who stood outside the gate selling fruits and vegetables from baskets piled high on their heads. They all called and sang to the people passing on foot or in cars and buses and bikes. Come and buy! Come and buy! Whole busloads of people used to stop. Motorbikes used to pull over. The girls selling oranges and plantains shouted and screamed and laughed and talked to everybody. They ran after cars for money held out of opened windows. They fought off the goats who ate their plantains. They chased off the children who stole their oranges. The girls outside Anna Hibiscus's gate did not have to play boring games with little cousins all day long. They were busy with the whole city. Those girls did not look bored. But no matter how many times Anna Hibiscus asked, her father and grandfather and mother and grandmother always said, no, 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 selling oranges is not for you, Anna Hibiscus. But one day, Anna Hibiscus was so bored, she decided not to listen. She decided to sell oranges anyway. Now, if you are interested in what happens next, read 